What's going on, everybody? Bob, that was incredible. I have to say, uh, I know nobody else <laughs> can see that, man. So Bob texted me. Uh, we got like what, maybe twenty minutes ago. He's like, "Hey, I'll be home in about twenty-five minutes. Hope that's cool." Literally slid into his chair as we went live, uh, seeing everybody on screen. That <laughs> genuinely amazing. That was like crossing the finish line at the buzzer type. I heard the music going down, and I knew that was it. So I had my five movies I had to grab, and I got my water bottle. I may have to fill this in the middle, but I'm good. You know, it's ridiculous. I've been home. I don't have any of my movies on, on physical in, in hand to talk about tonight. Oh, okay. See, I was nervous about that. I was like, do I need to pull the movie? No, it's smart. I should have done it. Um, unfortunately, I don't, I don't think I have all five of mine. But anyways, either way, I'm glad you're here. Bob, welcome back. I'm very excited to be back. I always enjoy being on your channel. Um, this is my third time back for this in particular. Appreciate you having me back on, man. It's always fun. Always is a great host. And I just appreciate you having me on. I love your chat. You will, you will always be welcome. And yes, my chat is the best part of tonight. So I'm going to go through some of these. Our friend, Nick, he's going to be watching the replay later. He's in bed. Of course, Perfect. Celeste is watching wolves of the throne room tonight. That sounds freaking amazing. Just uh mondo uh he's uh saying my boys bob and ryan back at it mondo's working on some incredible art for the zine this month mondo's a good guy holland what's up what's up holland Cam. uh brendan timmons johnny's here tonight what's up johnny what's going on wave best hey. youtube stream of the week hey cam again uh paul berryman looking forward to this time of the week uh paul is in australia so it's friday afternoon there what's up paul uh, Ronnie, hey, hey, Dustin, good evening, ready for Ryan, happy to see Bob back, look at that. Hey, Dustin. What's Wilkie's up, Movies and Music, hey, hey. Corey's a good guy. Stan, uh, yes, rest in peace, Anthony Hickox and Jeff Burr, this has been uh, a tough week, especially Jeff Burr reached a lot of people, uh, directed some incredible films and made a lot of friends, did a lot of conventions, uh, just made a lot of people happy, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, Everybody should go out watch uh watch some uh Jeff's movies tonight because man he did he did a lot that's for sure. Well, what's up, Stan? I miss that guy because I I haven't seen him. Well, I haven't you know it's been what six months. So what's up, Stan? Miss you, buddy. I remember Stan very well from last time I was here. Terry, what? hello. John Demars goes live with us. Hey, John. Hello. Uh, Johnny says, what's up, Corey? What's going on, Media Membrane? Hey, Media. Uh, I just finished recording yesterday an interview that Media Membrane sort of uh, inspired me to do, and I think people are going to love it the moment that drops. Nice. That's exciting. What's going on, DL? John Peters? Craig from Deaf Crocodile? Hello. Yeah. Dave Janes? Magic Hands? Yeah, it is Thursday again, and, and it may not feel like Thursday because we got a lot less announcements this week. Is um Deaf Crocodile, that's one of the uh boutique labels, the partner labels, right? Yep. Nice. Yeah, yeah they they are an OCN partner label, that's for sure. Uh Wave and uh Mike, what's going on? Sardis is here. Hello, Sibiner. Sibi. What's up? Sibi. Sulaco. Hey everyone. Rest it. Yeah, we're gonna be talking about Best Buy a lot tonight. <laughs> uh Kiray, what's going on? Another Australian. Uh, and you think I had a couple people text me, and one of my buddies is like, That's such BS. I don't believe it for a second. I was like, Hey, where there's smoke, there's fire. Uh, it's BS about Best Buy, yeah. He doesn't think it'll it really happen. I was like, Well, everybody's posting, and in my opinion, where there's smoke, there's fire. So, no, Digital Bits doesn't post something like that unless it's confirmed. I, I believe it. I, I mean, I'm not, it doesn't surprise me at all, though, to be honest with you. It doesn't surprise me, but it's definitely a, a bad thing, and we're going to be talking about it a lot tonight. Uh, Sibner says, my only question is, from 1 to 10, how horny is Bob going to be tonight? That's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, <laughs> well, we yeah. always talk about obsession movies or whatnot. What That's true. Uh, Craig says, I'm going to have to set up a five-timers club like SNL. And funny enough, I've joked about this. Uh, I, I've, I've thought about making little avatars for the people that have been on here many, many times. Oh, nice. uh, Tony's here. What's going on? Uh, already Friday the 13th in Sydney, Australia. Uh, man, film addiction here. You got a lot of uh, Bob's friends here with us tonight. Cody's a good guy. One of my favorites. Chris Silver. Hello, hello. Uh, Brett Madison. Going to be an awesome stream. Always. 
Watched Amityville 3 on blue. Forgot how terrible it was. Meg Ryan's worst. Uh, Amityville 2 is where it's at for me. That's for sure. I did not know Meg Ryan was in the Amityville 3. Josephine says, what's your thoughts on the writer strike ending? Uh, or, yeah, writer strike ending, but the actor's strike still going. I was going to say, I thought the one was still going, right? Yeah. The, the, actors... sag, the SAG strike, yeah. Yeah. So I'm just happy to see them finally starting to work on deals. But... Um, We'll see what happens. Uh, with until the but until the actors get that worked out, we're not going to see any movies being worked on much. I mean, the writers can start working and writing, but actors right. can't really work. Well, and a lot of the writers uh, are also a part of SAG too, so a lot of them are still striking. Okay. Ash is here. Tom is here. What's going on, Tom? Uh, let's see. I think that's most. Oh. There's Brian. Brian's here live. Uh, project. Yeah, that is a friend of mine, Brian. He's in New York. That uh, that's an old uh, media team that he did. Carrie oh. Mulligan's here. Last weekend, everyone watched Exorcist Four while the ultraviolet possession film when Evil Lurks was playing next door. I am dying to see when Evil Lurks. Definitely need to see it. I messaged you today about Carrie. Yep. And you got the poster right behind you. Oh yeah. Yep. All right, let's get into some interesting stuff. Any pickups you want to highlight, my friend? Not really necessarily. I mean, you know, I ended up picking up – I'll just grab these three because they're closest to me. But I ended up picking up um, – well, I got Transformers Rise of the Beast because I'm basically collecting – like I collect – anybody who doesn't know me, I'm a steelbook collector, and I essentially collect all of these damn things, steelbooks. Um, unless it's like Disney, there's a decent chance I won't. Um Scream 3. Scream's my favorite franchise. Nice. And uh, Beautiful. I actually like that steel book because it brings me back to when I was, uh, when I saw this in theaters. It was one of like the first slashers I remember seeing in theaters. Really cool experience seeing this with my dad. And I remember that, I think, teaser poster or something with the eye and everything like yeah. that. So I thought that was really cool. But I ended up double dip. Like I picked this up through uh, Diabolic for $44.99 a couple months ago um and ended up getting this one as well because it's got a different back and a different inside artwork so i had to get both because you know different artwork <laughs> so uh knowing that you were going to be on the show i i said i'm going to only talk about steelbooks tonight so uh, i decided at first to not get evil dead rise and then i went well yeah i probably should uh, i got the best buy exclusive natural born killers 4k right there yeah I'm not and right then there. uh i delayed it a week but i finally got it back uh Got got it in. I got the Exorcist. Uh, I Best pre exclusive. So because it wasn't in stores, I didn't get it. I don't pre order from Best Buy. Um, I pre ordered the Amazon one. Well, it's on Amazon. It's uh, it's the collector's box with yep. the cards. I pre ordered that. It's like a hundred dollars after tax, but yeah, it's pricey. And it's not even the nicest one, but I guess because the other one is the one with the. The pre like the 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 Bible thing. Yeah, it's the Bible. Thank you. So that was even cheaper. This one that Amazon's selling doesn't even have that, and it's more expensive. Interesting. Yeah. Um. So uh, I I picked three steel books, and they all happen to be coincidentally not actually uh Best Buy exclusive steel books because we're gonna be talking about Best Buy a lot tonight. Um. It is overall a uh. A, a grim feeling, and I'm going to go into detail why I believe that is the case, but there are still lots of cool things to cover tonight. Uh, but first, the whole reason that we are diving into physical media is to watch films. What, what have you been watching lately? Well, I've been doing 31 Days of Halloween. I'm trying to keep up with it. If um, I'll probably end up getting to society tonight, depending on what time we get out of here. Um, and or not society jesus christ i said society i've never seen species that's tonight's watch that's um, right so i was gonna watch species i just recently watched curry i watched pet cemetery and Candyman for the first time the original let's Candyman. get into some detail bob come on candy man was a little slow for me i didn't grow up with it okay pet cemetery i hated the remake i watched the remake before i saw the original what else have i watched recently fender bender was another one it's all right um i watched haunt it's mostly all horror movies watched a movie called Roadkill. My buddy sent me this. Um, I came home to a package in the mail, and I was like, did you send me this? He's like, yeah. I was like, well, you didn't put your name on it. I, I texted him. I was like, this movie was dog shit, bro. I hated it. <laughs> I was like, sorry. I just, no, didn't work for me. 
but um it's a like a yeah he likes it so <laughs> Uh, I've been doing the unsung horrors horror gives back where uh, every horror movie that you watch in the month of October, you donate at least a dollar to the charity that they are uh, giving to, which is uh, one of the animal organizations that I've got linked on the channel. But um, the best thing this month has been discovering new stuff that I'd never seen before. My list was really eclectic and Man, I've watched some great stuff. One of my films uh, that I watched is actually on the list tonight, so I'm not going to bring that one up yet. Uh, but another one, I started Targets today, the, the Criterion release that just came out this year, and I am, I, I'm only uh, about 40 minutes from the end, and I got to say, Targets is freaking incredible. This movie oh, yeah. is so well made and cannot wait to finish it. it. It's just been a super busy day. I don't even know what that is. It is a movie starring Boris Karloff from the late 60s, and he is playing a retiring Hollywood film star, which he was at the time, uh, that is sitting in a uh, awkward situation where he's trying to retire around the time when somebody was making a film for him to star in. And there's another story happening at the same time where someone is uh, in a very, uh, like, th they're brain is broken type of situation and they happen to own a lot of guns and stuff is about to go down uh it's it's really harrowing really well made super well acted and yeah i don't want to say too much more about it but it is incredible nice i got a question for you your chat stan and sibby have an inside joke it seems going on about roadkill can you please fill me in Sibiner? <laughs> It's comment right underneath it. I'm confused. Uh, it's not an inside joke. It's the fact that on my channel, I say everybody, every single movie has been someone's favorite film. Oh, okay. Uh, and Sibner's just saying that person could be a terrible person if they love that movie. Oh, okay. That's okay. it. Yeah, no, nothing against you or anything. Right. <laughs> uh, and I love this. I've been, uh, I, I was on a podcast earlier this month uh, talking about all of Don Bluth's films. He's the guy that directed uh, Land Before Time and Five Old. Uh, an American Tale, and uh, got so many other just great movies. And Dustin has been watching all of them, and I love reading all of your recaps, Dustin. Nice. Um, I also watched Poison for the Fairies this month, and that was incredible. It's a, a Mexican film that came out through Vinegar Syndrome. It's incredible. And, uh, yeah, there, there's been some other really good ones. There's been a couple stinkers. Uh, I will say I finally watched 29 Needles that came out through Unearthed Films. And did not even like a single second of it. Nothing at all. Um, I did also watch, and I told you today, I enjoyed the first 20 minutes. Man, uh, Toolbox Murders wasn't for me. I, I honestly get that. I wanted to like it. I liked the first 15, 20 minutes. I, I enjoyed the slasher elements. I just don't... It just dropped off and became something that I was like, what the fuck am I watching? I just... No, I, I don't. No hard feelings. Um, spilled the tea and dropped the rants tonight. <laughs> <laughs> uh, which version um, of the original? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I didn't watch the remake. There is a remake, right? Yeah. No, I watched the original. Yeah. It, it was the the 4K from Blue Underground. Is that the one yeah, you watched? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I ended up finally getting the slip cover for zombie from blue underground by the way nice i got that back when i made a trip to st louis i got it for it was 50 bucks and i was like you know what this is technically a steal because it goes for like i saw a bid go for 108 dollars so i snatched That's it right away grab that and slip for... cover yeah. <laughs> you wouldn't do it huh not at all gosh no i mean it's 50 bucks but the movie itself is probably what 30 35 i mean yeah I mean, so not too bad. So I didn't pay that much more for the slip. Yeah, but if you would have bought it on release day, it would have only been thirty four all in. Thirty. Yeah. Sure. Okay. All right. <laughs> I need the slips. So we talked about this today. <laughs> That's true. Uh, let's see. Uh, Simner, quick sore subject question: Is Dark Force just not good because of the owner, or are there transfers dog shit as well? Uh, not only are there transfers akin to Code Red transfers for the most part but they are just lazy on their releases. So th there's one, uh, I'm not going to remember the exact title it was, but I think it was 2019. They put out a movie and it had about 30 seconds of 
uh, random Italian dialogue in the middle of an English language film. And they didn't bother to put Italian su uh, the uh, subtitles over the Italian when they were supposed to. And it was a mistake because it was on the previous release. So it was definitely supposed to be subtitled. And they said, oh, yeah, uh, oops, basically. Uh, it, it doesn't matter. And, and said that they weren't going to fix everything. So that, that's yeah. that's the sort of thing that they I don't get creeped out easily. That dude, creep, the guy, banana guy or whatever. Oh, man. That oh, he's, you know, he's dead, right? No, not not Bob. Not not Bill. Not Bill. Um, he's Banana Man. Yeah, but he's dressed up. The other guy, it has not to do with the long hair that runs. Oh, I'm not sure. He's. I feel like he's dressed up as the banana guy too, as well. At times. I, I haven't watched anything but from. They're, they're cousins. They were cousins, right? Oh, I don't think they were related at all. I thought I thought that Dark Force owner or whatever CEO was related in, in some way to cuz Scorpion and Code Red they were brothers, right? Yes. Yeah. Bill and I'm not sure the other guy's name from Scorpion. Uh uh Walt was his name. I really Bill liked, Olsen and Walt Olsen. I really like Scorpion. We're not going to see any more Scorpion or Code Red titles ever again, are we? Uh, I, from what I hear, there are some that were more, that were still acquired and they might still come out under those names under the Kino distribution with okay. those logos on it still. Nice. But then after that, probably not. Yeah. I was a big fan of Scorpion, man. You know that. Yeah. Scorpion did really great work. Um, it's, it's, it's a sad story basically. Um, he died like less than six months after his brother. Yeah. They were both going through a lot of health issues and not. Uh, I mean, they were both pretty old too. Jeez. And the Code Red side, like, not to disparage his name after death or anything like that, but there's a lot of stuff that he put out that he knew he didn't have the rights to release, but he assumed that nobody would argue it. Nobody would come yeah. up and say, I have the rights because he thought the rights were just too complicated. I heard things about Bill over Code Red. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot there. Yeah. Uh, I did. Get, right. I do have a couple of his movies: Porno Holocaust, Orgy of the Living Dead. Got a couple of those. I recognize some similarities in between those two titles, there, Bob. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, in the collection, but those are two highlights. <laughs> What's going on? That's my mom. Hi, mom. Oh wow! I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Angel. Oh no! Please, I, I've showed her worse films than you saying porno and orgy. Believe me. <laughs> <laughs> i have gosh i think i'm at like 20 code red left and that's it because most of the stuff are, are being upgraded is that the anthony that i know yes okay nice what's up anthony i sent anthony an email um a little just a heads up uh craig says easiest way to find out who owns the rights to something put it out without asking they'll find you really fast <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right, we're on to film discussion time. Um, we are going to discuss discuss uh, obsession thrillers. Why, why are we talking about obsession thrillers tonight, Bob? Because I like boobs. <laughs> I don't know. This dream is going to get flagged so many times. Oh, geez. Um, why are we? Because you came up with some really good ideas, though. I don't know if I'm allowed to mention the other ideas. You, you can feel free to mention as much okay. as you want. You came up with best kills which was really cool. Um, I like that. We talked about doing a, a franchise ranking. Um, and then we also talked about, Ryan mentioned best sex scenes in a horror movie. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> I'm joking. Okay, okay. That's not something I wouldn't say, but I yeah. definitely didn't say that this time. But um, That would no, have to be no, a Patreon no. exclusive stream. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> okay. Anyways, it's, um, when we talked about one other one was Final Girls. That's fine. Am I supposed to take this as a compliment? Mr. Whateverism says, when I was a kid, I watched the Cosby show on Thursday night, and now I watch you. Are you saying I re I'm replacing Cosby? Because I'm don't, not. I don't, Please. I don't think that's a compliment. I don't know. <laughs> it's an appropriate comment. Um, not when I'm here, please. Uh, <laughs> but yes, I like the Final Girl one as well. I thought that was pretty cool. because I feel like. But so you came up with some really cool ideas, I thought, and we were like, I was I like this idea too. So we talked about favorite obsession thrillers, and then we also talked about like favorite obsession, like the character, I guess. And so yeah. we're gonna do which I guess at the end of the day, the two go hand in hand. 
Oh God, Johnny. Pudding puffs. Uh, all com- right. It was let's a go. It was a compliment, Ryan. <laughs> let's go into. Wow, I'm all thrown off now. Uh, best obsession thrillers because for this, um, I had an interesting, uh, an, an interesting list. I think there's a lot of great titles in the genre. I think there's also a lot of trash in the genre, and I'm very curious to see what you thought. Uh, Bob doesn't love ranking, so we're just gonna do five of our favorites. I like ranking stuff. It's really hard for me to rank these. But I also came in two minutes before the stream started, asked him I was here like 29, and I slid into the chair. So I just grabbed five movies that I enjoy, but these would I don't I would have to really think hard about if these would truly make my top five. But I do like all five that I pulled. So let's ask what makes an obsession thriller? Because uh, there's a lot of things that uh, can do this. We were talking before, like uh, stalkers. This is a very obvious obsession thriller. But then there are some other ones that I could, I could throw in here. Like I, I, it's not on my list. So I want to mention it right now. In my opinion, like Whiplash is kind of an obsession thriller. Because really quick, your one of your commenters, all that is man one is going to play the blackening with his kids. Have fun, all that is man. See you, Brian. Looks like he's going to play the blackening. Sibner says, I've got one as my number one and keep curious if either of you have it on your list. Probably not just to, to make you sad. Um, but what makes something you were talking about? Sorry. Yeah. What, what makes it an obsession thriller? So obviously an individual uh, that is obsessed with something to the point that they're going overboard and it turns into uh, a thriller, which I don't, the only real way to define this, I, it, it's easiest when discussing somebody that's obsessed with another individual, but like Whiplash, it's kind of an oh, obsession thriller. Oh, that Whiplash. Oh, I love that movie. So if you're talking about, I didn't you know, Whiplash, I just couldn't put two and two together because uh, he's obsessed about band, like drumming. Yeah. Right, but not a person. The, or you could say J.K. Simmons say is the one obsessed. J.K. Simmons is, is obsessed with him. With perf- perfection perfection i don't disagree with that at all blue steel is blue steel something that just got a release by or is it's, it a release by vestron vestron is releasing it yeah nice i always could trust mika's opinions on movies or horror movies. have you not seen blue steel yet no i haven't you would like blue steel a lot yeah it sounds it, like it borders I, on copaganda it, but it's it's pretty good well i trust you and mika so the crush is one i whoa the crush is a good one holland I like all right things. we're, we're going to start going into titles that we might have on our list so let's go into these uh why don't you share one of your five first all right we'll just start with i i'll just start with the dvd because it's only on dvd we'll start with swim fam look i i get it it's not like a great movie or anything like that i watched this when i was probably in high school um but i like it uh She's super. She plays the part really well, though. She, she does. does. Yeah. And um, I like Jesse Bradford in it. I I like Swim Fan a lot. It's it's fun. Um, and once again, it's like nostalgic to me. So I had fun with Swim Fan. I understand it's not like groundbreaking. It's not some, you know, crazy great movie. But you know, I'm the type of person I go into a movie. I know what I'm getting. I'm not asking for too much. So when people are like, "It's really stupid," blah blah, I'm like, "What did you expect?" I had fun uh, with Swim Fan. Did you hate it? I didn't hate it. I just remember not loving it, but I also haven't seen it since it came out. Yeah. When I rewatched it, it definitely wasn't the same as when I was a kid in yeah. high school or whatever, or younger than that. But I still enjoyed it, but definitely not as much as I did when I first watched it when I was really young. I remember it feeling sort of cartoonish, like just so over the top that it was past believable. Yeah, it's over the top for sure. Yeah. I'm going to get the first two that are like, would bother people out of the way first. <laughs> uh, well, I'm going to do that with mine as well, because somebody just mentioned it. I'm going to mention The Crush. Uh, the Crush was my number five, and I think it's a, a great choice because Alicia, Silver, Alicia Silverstone is so freaking weird in that movie. Um, she is young. Uh, she she plays the part perfectly. Uh, it is done in a way that is genuinely creepy, how old was um, she in that? Like 17 when they filmed it? I think so. 16 or 17. Yeah, because it's pretty creepy when people start talking about her in that movie and yeah. you find out how old she is. 
So yeah, and then the whole uh, you know Carrie Elwes being in that movie makes it a little odd because he has been he's been in so many movies where he was just wholesome, obviously. And then you know you see him in Saw, you see him in I think it was the third season of Stranger Things. So obviously it's not like he's never done grown up films or anything like that. But to see him creeping on somebody young a little bit was uh, an odd odd thing but it made the film feel more gross and i appreciate that uh i do think i do think that the crush is good and it's a pretty damn good obsession thriller i like the crush a ton yeah i'm a big fan i was fortunate at the time about it what's your next one sir um is sydney that young when it came out he was 14 oh well okay when was that 90 never mind that was what 96 97 no earlier i earlier than I was, that for sure was it, it was 93 94 it might even be earlier than that my friend i was totally not doing my math no it had to be like 93 or 94 let me see Crush. but i was totally i just got confused there uh 93 yeah dead on 93 okay yeah i knew it was early 90s um all right, and I think she was in one called The Babysitter, or was that a different actress? She was in a, just Babysitter, maybe. I'm not sure. The Sibner's 42. It still looks good for his age. No, I did not think he was 14. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what's your next one? Uh, I'm going to go with Obsessed. Uh, I figured that would come up. Yeah, you know what? Uh, Holly Larder. I like blondes. Um, but... She looks good in this, and this Sibner's is gonna move you up to an eight. Yeah, <laughs> what does that even mean? I re- I get eleven strikes, he said, or something like that. What is- <laughs> um, but yeah, this is corny. It's cheesy. I like Idris Elba as well. Um, and I saw this when I was a bit younger too, and I, I remember seeing this in theaters and enjoyed it. I had fun with I had fun with that, that one. Somebody, fun. <laughs> oh jeez, wave. All right, whatever, wave. <laughs> uh i'll be kind and i won't say too much about obsessed so i'm gonna go to the next one she was uh, in the babysitter yes i was right with that i know that's why i like swim fan and obsessed i understand that they're not great movies but see and i remember swim fan at least being fun but obsessed you didn't think was any fun no <laughs> okay no that's fair that's fair enough scout taylor compton's in obsessed by the way okay yeah uh, my next choice is one that was on my watch list for this month, like I said, and it's from 1982 and a wonderful German movie called The Fan. Uh, <laughs> the Fan with, yeah, it did, it, no, that would, wait. Mondo Macabro put this out. It's not a film that you've seen probably. Okay, never mind. Well, it's I've a, it's a German with, film. I've seen the one with Wesley Snipes and Robert De Niro, which could be considered an obsession thriller as well. Maybe, yeah. Robert De Niro is definitely obsessed in that one. Uh, so the fan from 1982 is about a young girl that is obsessed with a pop singer uh, going by the name of R. And uh, it is a a slow burn and then an immediate burn. Um, I really can't say too much about it because it escalates so quickly that it almost feels like... Uh, I know we were just talking about the movie Whiplash, but it feels like a Whiplash moment where you're watching one film with an individual acting really odd because they're so obsessed with this individual and then it turns so quickly into this morbid crazy ending to a movie um it's great it's superbly acted really well written uh has a strong female lead in a way that you don't necessarily want her to be strong in some cases but well, it's just it's mentioning so good. whiplash if you're if we're counting whiplash whiplash would be my number one probably or up there with number one because I think Whiplash is a masterpiece. It's it's a masterpiece, yeah. I'm not counting it for mine tonight, but uh, it, it's the sort of thing that I would say you could argue that it's an obsession thriller. For sure. And yeah, I was saying a, a Whiplash moment where you're going one direction and the film takes an immediate U-turn for you. Mm-hmm. Okay, what's the third one that you want to talk about? I get into three good ones now, okay? Got that out of the way. Um, since somebody mentioned it already, let's just go to it. I think we're going to have one of the same picks. We'll have a few of the same picks, probably. Okay, yeah. I don't know. Misery, though, is really good. Obviously, this is an excellent movie. Um, It's just, yeah, this is a ton of fun. Uh, Ton of fun. 
It is it's a ton of fun to watch. Super fun movie. I heard in the book. I love watching James Conn getting tortured. Dude, she, she, with the scene where she gets his ankles. Oh, shit. It is fun to watch. <laughs> and look, Simi thinks Kathy Bates is hot. So, I mean, you know, teach his own. I, she, Kathy Bates isn't my type and that, but, you know, Simi does. Um, teach his own once again. I, I enjoy Misery. I think it's a great movie. Uh, it's very intense and uh, it still holds up well today. I agree. I'm, I'm going to change a couple of mine just so we have fully different lists uh, since I'm not holding up actual releases here. Um, the next one I want to talk about, uh, I'm going to go to Perfect Blue. Perfect Blue is uh, an animated film that is done in an incredible style. Uh, it is still the only anime film I've watched, and I think it is genuinely a masterpiece. Uh, it is absolutely an obsession thriller and done in a way that most people are not going to think of uh, when you're thinking of regular obsession thrillers. So everybody that's not seen Perfect Blue should go check it out because it's amazing. I've not heard of that. Two two titles you named I have not heard of. Um, you ready for my next one? Let's do it. All right, I think she has the most Oscar nominations and has never won. You already know who I'm about to say and what I'm going to pick, right? Yep. Glenn Close deserves a fucking Oscar. Yeah. It's bullshit. She should have won for this movie. Um, she plays this perfectly. I mean, you can't play this part much better than she did. She should have won an Oscar. Um, but I would never leave my wife for Glenn Close in this movie. Uh, who was... <laughs> Ann Archer, right? Yeah. Um, no, yeah. His wife looked better than Glenn Close, personally. I thought so. But Fatal Attraction is excellent, and I did not watch it. It's really good. And I did not watch this until like a year ago for the first time because my buddy wow. loves obsession and stalker movies. So we decided to check this one out. And it's really good. Yeah, it's. I enjoy it. I have too many copies of it, and I bought the 4K, so I haven't watched it yet. For a handful of years, uh, Michael Douglas was the king of these erotic thriller obsession type movies, and it's odd. But uh, he did the he... one with Demi Moore, where she's she's crazy in that one. Yeah. Uh, what was that? Um, Disclosure or something? No, that's uh, not that one. Is it? Yeah, I know what you're saying. But um, it's wait. How do you pronounce Glenn Close's name? Is it Glenn Close? Close what? close he said it's not close i i don't think i think he's making a joke about the phrase it's not close because oh. she is great i was like how do you okay i've seen way too much of douglas <laughs> <It's just> <laughs> yeah the movie's called disclosure um glenn close is amazing and i'll go back to what i still think is my favorite performance from her which isn't fair because it's not a movie but her uh her role in season four of the shield she is a freaking gift to TV. Um, her and Anthony Anderson both put on like career best performances in season four of The Shield. So I don't know if anyone in the chat would find this to be, a good, it's definitely not enjoyable, right? Or a good movie. But if you like Glenn Close, um, I would recommend at least checking out. See, I loved a new movie that she did with Mila Kunis uh, called Four Good Days. It's about addiction. I've heard it's great. And I personally loved it. Um, it's not necessarily the easiest watch. Most addiction movies aren't. But I loved it. And certain elements hit close to home. But Glenn Close is great. And just watching her back on the big, not big screen, but back on the screen with Mila Kunis. And her teeth look so, oh, my God. Like, they made Mila Kunis look pretty horrific in that movie. And that's hard to do because I think Mila Kunis is great. Yeah. Yeah. Um all right, so I've got two left. Uh, my number four here uh, is another one that I'm going to swap out. Um, I had this on my honorable mention list, but I'm going to put it in here for sure. Black Swan. I think Black Swan is an incredible obsession Mila thriller. Kunis. Uh, Mila Kunis. That's the reason I brought it up right now. Um, this one is dark in, in the times when it needs to be. It's such an odd turn. Uh, it, it is a, a, a really incredible release from Aronofsky that is... Uh, I think overlooked, especially because how many people hated Mother. Um, love this movie. Love the performances from the two leads. And, uh, I mean, the the performance from Cassell is really good as well. Uh, very happy with, with Black Swan. And I definitely need to watch it again. That being said, 
I don't think that thing has a 4K release, and that no. would make an incredible 4K. I thought I had the steel book, but I don't, and I'm really disappointed now. I went to go pull it. Yeah, is there a steel book? There's this, there's two. Oh, the I yeah, I remember that one. Th there's this one, which was like the I don't know what they call uh, it, but Dia the, de los Muertos. Yes, exactly. There was one of those. I'm so pissed I don't have that one. Um, those are really expensive now too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what's his name? Did the artwork for those? Yeah. Uh, KB just uh. Not KB. KB. Jake did just. Oh, did KB do an interview with him too? Yeah. And yeah. then Jake from Steelbook Obsessed just had him on his channel too to promote the pumpkin head. Yep. What's going on? What's up, Mel? All right, my friend, you're on your last one. All right, I got out all the other stuff, so let's get into I'm going to be good now. I'm on my best behavior. Oh, the, that's a good pick. The Invisible Man. Um, this was the fifth one I grabbed. I already knew the other four I was going to grab. Invisible Man's great. Uh, a lot of fun as well. Um and I love the opening of that movie. I thought it was incredible. Um, the first 15, 20 minutes, I just think it's super tense. I love the way it's shot as well. I think that that director, Lee Winnell, um, I want to see him do so much more because I thought Upgrade was like a masterpiece. I I wish they would hand over this whole dark universe idea that they had to Lee Winnell and have him do all of them. Yeah, he's he's in, he's incredible. I I thought Upgrade and Invisible Man when I saw that I was like I need more from him ASAP. Yeah. Um so hot take and I I'm curious to see what anybody would say about this. Uh the restaurant kill in Invisible Man, I think that's the best kill that Blumhouse has ever filmed. Oh, that scene with the sister. Is it the sister? The yeah. sister sitting at the table and the knife, yeah. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, the because you just think she did it. This slit. Oh my goodness! I, that that kill comes out of nowhere because you're already does. tense about the conversation, and then you don't know that he's in the restaurant. Right. No, that scene is is remarkable, and it's it's yeah. And then even the scene in the hospital is awesome. I mean, the camera work in that scene too. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I would love anybody to to put up any other kill in a Blumhouse film that that would be better than that one because I can't think of anything else that would top it. All right, do me a favor and pull the one that your mom's thinking of. Uh, my mom is probably thinking of Single White Female, um, okay. and it's on my it's on my honorable mention list. Um, I had a friend I've... that was living the life of Single White Female. <laughs> she was the victim, and uh, yeah, it didn't get to that point, but she was definitely living that life. <laughs> I, I'm not sure if that's the one she's thinking of, but I'm betting it is. Uh, the one that I really want to talk about is I, I I was saving this for the last one because it is desperately in need of a Blu-ray release. And that is the movie Unlawful Entry. Have you ever seen Unlawful Entry? Mm -mm. No. So it is about a couple that is, uh, they, they discover that their house has been robbed and they call the cops. And the cops take like this odd... Uh, friendship with this couple and they they help them set up security cameras and all this other stuff and it turns into just this crazy thriller that you are not expecting it to be and it's from uh an incredible cast the the people that are in this that you are um watching just carry out these acts and be victims it's not something that you are absolutely ready for kurt russell's in this Ray Liotta is yeah. You got Madeline in this movie. Madeline Stowe's in this. I'm in Madeline Stowe in the '90s. I watched yep. anything with her in the '90s. Yeah, and it came out in '92 when it was still uh, uh, right around that time of the Rodney King uh, beatings. And it's it's a really interesting time to see how uh, the film community responded to all of that and how they they shined a light on police at the time and a lot of people will forget and uh maybe like have to be reminded that there was a ton of copaganda that came out at that time and i said that word about uh blue steel a minute ago but this one um it doesn't feel like that it gets weird and gross and desperately needs a blu-ray release does it i was never mind <laughs> i was just gonna ask that um Okay, let me take a shot at what your mom's thinking. Because she said it's not single white female. Mm. Uh, the other one, my mom loves Travolta. The fanatic? So 
No. <laughs> the fa- no, a good movie. No, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I just hold on. I, whatever. All right, what is it? Well, and we talked about the Palma today. Do you remember which one I'm talking about yet? Are you talking uh Blowout? Yeah. Is that I I haven't seen Blowout, so I don't know. Um but would you consider Indecent Proposal a little bit of an obsession movie? Absolutely. Cuz if I can say I think <laughs> domestic disturbance. <laughs> um, I <laughs> I can't is. believe you said the fanatic. <laughs> I don't know if you. Uh, no, I, your mom might love the fanatic. <laughs> my mom loves Limp Biscuit. She had to have this one. I uh, the one I was thinking of though, and don't laugh, but I love it. Sleeping with the enemy. Yeah, I so I didn't like sleeping with the enemy very much. I found it to be a little bit boring. I'm so sorry. Um, wasn't for me. Nobody's gonna laugh. Yeah, uh, they're all gonna laugh at you. <laughs> they're, all gonna laugh. Carrie. they're all gonna laugh uh, at the fanatic. <laughs> Dead Sea Life says the Rodney King beating was taking place just outside the bar when the beginning scene from Terminator 2 was being filmed. Nice. Yeah, well, yeah, I was young, but living in Southern California when that was happening, and I still I haven't seen Blowout. Um, but I'm curious, does your mom like Indecent Proposal? I'm not sure. It's a good one. Do you like Indecent Proposal? At least? Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely a good one. She likes Julia Roberts. Well, according to her, she likes Julie Roberts. <laughs> Don't be doing your mom like that. Don't be mean. Come on. That was a weird sentence. Uh, she says yes. Um, okay, so uh, some honorable mentions. Misery was my number one for a long time until I went, you know, I'm going to stump hard for a, an unlawful entry uh, release. I think Misery might be like, the definition of an obsession thriller to to my heart for sure uh i i love everything about that movie i think that kathy bates is just one of the best villains ever um really got to throw out single white female again that's a big one um zodiac similar says i the thing is i don't know if i call that an obsession thriller like i understand the the detectives are obsessed a little bit, but I don't know that I would call Zodiac an obsession thriller, really. Your mom's favorite's Misery. She enjoys it as well. Crocodile says, I guess King of Comedy isn't a thriller. That's one that was on my short list, but I ended up leaning the same way you just said. It's not really a thriller. So no one liked the fan with Robert De Niro, I guess. Mm, not, a, not, not for this, really. Jake Gyllenhaal is obsessed. Apocalypse Now. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, Play Missy for me is definitely one that could be considered. And then Vertigo is, is an obvious choice. Oh, there, yeah. I still need to see Play Misty for me. And now that Kino officially announced it on 4K. Yep. Yeah. But there's no release date yet, is there? No. Yeah. And I, The Rocks of Cradle. That's a big one. Oh, The Hand That Rocks the Cradle is excellent. Excellent. I think The Hand That Rocks the Cradle is so good. When I was a kid in that scene with the... um. Uh, where he walks in the um, why am I drawing a blank here? But the you know what, John, what you want to talk about? Cape Fair is another good one because it's throwing out some fingers right now, but yeah, the the glass shatters all the glass, yeah. right? Yeah, that was messed up as a kid. I watched that and I was like, oh man, yeah, I, I can't say uh, enough good things about that movie, although it's been a long time since I've seen it last. The Good Son, The Good Son, that's. Yeah, I mean it's a great movie. Um, interesting idea as a uh, obsession have, thriller. I only have one custom slip cover, and it's for the good son. I did not pay for it though. Uh, we we also didn't mention the movie Obsession. Uh, that that's a very good one. What's uh, that? Screen Factory Screen Factory put that one out. It's a uh, another De Palma film. Okay. What about Dress um, to Kill? What is that about? I have it from Kino. Is that an obsession movie? That's another uh, De Palma movie. Not, not the way that we're talking, really. That's a great movie, though. Michael Caine is great. I, I did. Just to Kill just came up. I did not like Fifty Two Pickup, the one with. Uh, oh my gosh, I did not like Fifty Two Pickup. Um, what was the other one I was about to say? American. Uh, oh, uh, don't look now. Um, this is one that was on my list. I forgot to click over to my list again. Um, don't Sutherland? look now. Yeah, Donald Sutherland, because they're obsessed in in their daughter's death, and they start seeing things because of it. 
Don't Look Now is an incredible, incredible movie with just two just beautiful performances. Uh, Sutherland is crazy. I that that one. Uh, Chris Silver says a sleeper is Lakeview Terrace. With I, that's uh, Samuel Jackson and yeah, I bet you're you're not a fan of that one. <laughs> Uh, I don't know that I've seen that one actually. Lake Few Tears? I didn't mind Lake Few Tears. Dressed to, yeah, that's a good way to put that. Dressed to Kill is more of a Jalo, an American Jalo. I just introduced a buddy of mine to Demons for the first time and he didn't like it. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Dude McMahon says, What about Midnight Madness? Yeah, it would count. Uh, I did not get the 4K of Don't Look Now yet. Uh, yeah, neither did I. Not yet, but I will. Shame. Is Shame the one with Michael Fassbender? Yeah. That's the one with Fassbender? Yep. Oh, yeah. Somebody introduced One me. hour photo, definitely. God, it's been a long time since I've seen that one, too. One hour photo is really good. Yeah. That's, yeah. How have we not mentioned? Yeah, one hour photo. One hour photo is really good. Uh, Shame was pretty interesting to watch. I didn't mind shit. Oh, you got a little background noise now. Had to for you. <gasps> Mika says I go to sleep to demons. <laughs> uh oh. Mika. Shame, great film. Yeah, shame is amazing. What else is there? I'm trying to think. I don't know. There's a lot that could hit home in this. Um, there. P two. <laughs> I just thought. I need... That needs a Blu-ray in the U.S. I, it does. I got a... Why? Does it have a Blu-ray overseas at all? It does, yeah. Does it really? Yeah. Who put that out? Uh, some. I think it was a German company. The it's, cable guy is definitely an obsession thriller. Right. Sibby's really roasting my ass tonight, huh? He says, shame hits too close to home, huh, Bob? <laughs> um, yes. So this is the one I was shocked Bob did not say tonight. I was going to wait to bring Mark, this up. Mark Wahlberg? Yeah, because I think fear is uh, probably the second most obvious obsession thriller movie. Oh, it's my nightly movie. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Makes sense. Um, fear is excellent. Fear is, is Mark Wahlberg's probably his best film, like by a long shot. And it's only because he's playing a scumbag that he is. So would you consider The Strangers an obsession movie? home invasion it's not really yeah it's definitely yeah. home invasion are you off topic but are you excited for the new strangers trilogy that lionsgate's putting out in i gotta hear something about it before i get you know i'm glad they're making movies but Did they really film all three back to back to back like that i have no idea supposedly they filmed all three um but yeah fear fear is great reese witherspoon's incredible mark Wahlberg. Fear is the one from mill creek they put it yes. out yes with that retro vhs looks over Happening with like a word, says Ryan. <laughs> oh my goodness. Fear needs a proper Blu-ray release. Do you hate Mill Creek's Blu-rays as well? I, I mean, I don't hate Mill Creek's Blu-rays. I'm glad they have a release. I just wish that they were restored in any way. Yeah, what they just don't put any work into their Blu-rays or what? Well, they do for certain things, like the the Ultraman releases. They put a ton of work into those. Mm -hmm. Um, the uh like hard ticket to hawaii that whole line that they did they put tons of work into that i love those speaking of boobs i'm sure bob loves those <laughs> and, okay carrie mulligan says uh brooke shields endless love is insane the remake sanitizes yeah. that dark finale uh brooke and, shields has made a lot of dark movies though endless love is is pretty fucked up um, and what makes it more fucked up is the fact that the mother is watching her daughter have sex. Um, yeah. um, and I, what did you think of that scene when you watched that? Were you like, uh, yeah, right. I mean, again, it's for hard its to time, compare. For its time, like the 80s, was that not as weird to watch her daughter? She's like fantasizing her youth. I mean, it's, you know, obviously, know. but. Yeah, first Tom Cruise performance when he's in like 15 seconds. <laughs> I lie, says John DeMarsico. I don't, well, yeah, he's obsessed with uh, his work. I get, yeah, that's true. And you did mention Whiplash being obsessed. Yeah. Okay, but Endless Love, 
I wanted to like it. I just didn't. But yes, it it dragged so much. Endless love did. I just yeah, I didn't. I didn't love it. Yeah. I do not have endless love. For you it. did not have endless love for it. No, yeah, you did. We not. were both going for the obvious joke. Yep. It's okay. Two great. Uh, nights. I feel like that's what well. I think we're nearing the end of this, Bob, because I know you got to wake up early. We us- we usually do. We did four hours once. We did six hours once, and I had been working 15, 16 hour days. So yeah, and I got to try and squeeze in a movie a night. It is not easy, not sleeping a lot. But Ryan, I know you know the feeling of not sleeping much either. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? Uh, before we go, and I know this is going to feel weird because it's like I'm giving myself a trophy. Bob, you want to tell everybody about this? Yeah, 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 yeah. So Ryan is going to be on my Hall of Fame stream. Um, I don't know how many people know, but I started a series called Physical Media Collectors Hall of Fame. It was just an opportunity to showcase uh, certain people in the physical media community. And I want to get Ryan on there. So he's going to be my next guest. I think it's like episode 12 or 13 or something like that. So already. Yeah. So I'm excited to have you on, man. Um, It's. I take them pretty seriously personally. Uh, yeah. I try to put a lot of work into them, uh, but it's all it's all for fun. And the idea is to have somebody different on every single time I do it. But I'm super excited to have you on, man. And uh, it'll be the first time we do a one on one on my channel. So, um, and when's that coming up? And what time and all that? That it should be the 24th. I feel like October. Yeah. 25th, October 25th. I got my days all fucked up. I just know it's the final Wednesday of every um, prisoners. I, I would say so, yeah. Prisoners, for sure, yeah. That, that's that's definitely, yeah. Yeah, dude says sleep deprivation. So, yeah, I have real bad sleep problems, um, and I'm going to be driving like 11 hours uh, for the meetup. And I'm just, That all sounds super safe, by the way. Yeah, yeah, I don't sleep much. <laughs> a real problem i'd need to work on but uh we need to meet up sometime absolutely i really am sad that i had to miss that st louis trip and now by the way now that all the stuff is out of the bag i can say publicly i was supposed to be in st louis but i had multiple commentaries i was working on that weekend so i couldn't go with kb and uh nathan we were all going to drive together Uh i got scheduled to do multiple commentaries and i was I was overwhelmed like crazy that weekend. So it just didn't line up right. Yeah. Yeah. No. Um, I know I'm, I think we're planning on doing it again in April or May of 2024. So I've been doing a lot more of these now. I enjoy it. Um, it's a lot of fun meeting up with different people in the community. So, and, uh, that's just a lot of fun. So, uh, but like I said, I can't wait to have you on my channel. I'm doing two big, Two big streams, literally back to back. I'm not going to sleep. Um, I've got the one. So I've got this weekend or next weekend that I'm driving to Pennsylvania and doing the whole weekend trip, road trip. And then on that Tuesday, I'm doing an all women's horror tournament on my channel. Nice. And I'm putting a shit ton of like ridiculous stunts into that. Nice. <laughs> when you come on my channel, you never know what you're going to get. It's true. <laughs> Very much. And uh, so I'm excited about that. And then I'm going to have you on for wednesday so uh stan was asking how am i enjoying my staycation i am not so far uh i am uh i've worked harder since i got off work last thursday than maybe ever in my life it has been such a busy time um just this week i have uh edited all of the features for a disc i've done a, a visual essay i've done an audio commentary i'm about to edit another visual essay and then I got to do the zine for this month that's about to drop. So, yeah, there's a ton of stuff coming out. What's the audio commentary? What movie? Can you say that or no? None of them have been announced publicly yet. Okay. Are they anything that I would know? Probably not. Maybe. Um. Yeah, actually, a couple of them maybe. Okay, nice. And you're doing an audio commentary for a movie, like the whole? Uh, We've done five of them already. That is awesome, man. Yeah, everybody in the chat's like, yeah, I'm buying that, so. Yeah, uh, Chris. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm doing. I, we've done audio commentaries. We've done visual essays. I'm editing for some of these discs. It's a lot of work, but yeah. Yeah, man. I. That's one thing. I honestly, you know, I joke around and I have fun and stuff like that. But uh, I respect hard work. 
Um, I, I talked to you about this before <laughs> when I reached out to you, you were like, I was just, you know, cause I reached out to you like a week before you were worried I was going to cancel, which I get right. Somebody hasn't, you know, I message you randomly and I'm like, Hey, uh, you might think I'm going to have to cancel or something like that. But one thing I value is time. Um, there's right. just a whole lot of it. So like, I, yeah, it, I just don't have a lot of time in my life either. So like one thing I can't stand is just don't waste my time. <laughs> Yeah, I, I was thinking about that a minute ago because I wanted to promote who's scheduled to be on the show next week, but I haven't verified again that they're still willing to do it because we haven't talked in a couple weeks. So, whew, uh, yeah, hopefully soon um, we, 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 we get uh, confirmation on that because I'm very eager to announce who's going to be on the show next week. Tell us when the release is. <laughs> All right. Oh, Paul thanks, says, Tony. You, can't, you can tell us. We won't tell anyone. <laughs> yeah, I, I wish I could. I, I'd get in a lot of trouble. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'll, I'll find out backstage. <laughs> I'm just joking. Uh, it, no, it is definitely not Jeremy. Uh, don't need to worry about that, Tom. Man, this has been fun. It's always great to have you on here. I, no, and I appreciate it. And I know I say some stupid things. That's just who I am. We uh, all do. It's all right. And, uh, but I appreciate it. I always do. Uh, it seems like, you know, you have me on a couple times a year, so I do appreciate it. You get 52 weeks of these, it seems like, if, unless you take a break. So I've, I've missed one in the last 26 months. But I always say this, sound like a broken record. I don't care. It's the people in the chat that make these fun, man. Um, I agree. I, every time. Because I, I don't even, like, I haven't been recording any pre-recorded content. I just don't have an interest or a desire in it right now. But live streaming's fun because I like interacting. And you just don't do that when you click play and it's just you in front of the camera. It's just not the same. Well, uh, for everybody out there, if you're interested in more of the chat type of vibe and hanging out with everybody that likes this stuff, sign up for the, the disconnected Patreon link is in the description below. I've got a discord that is incredibly active and, uh, yeah, come, come hang out and talk like this all the damn time. Um, we've got many, many people in there. We, there's always a conversation going on. There's been lots of things posted literally while we were chatting tonight in here. So it's it's literally always active. It's wild how many people are in there. Love it. So come hang out. Join the Patreon. We'd love to have you. Uh, anything else coming out on your channel you want to show everybody? No, I just live streams coming out of my ass, I feel like. Um, that's, that's about it. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to think. I got a horror tournament. I actually competed, Ryan, on one. I saw Tim hosted, right? Yeah. I'm fucking trying to add him in, in yep. the show, though. Like, the shit I collect. I couldn't pull Porno Holocaust. I couldn't pull Orgy of the Living Dead. I couldn't pull half the shit I would normally pull because they those clowns had it all. Yep. So, you probably have it, too, yeah? No? Oh, yeah. Got them both. Yeah. So it, it was tough. It was difficult. I think I'm better made for hosting. <laughs> but um, that's yet to be seen. But... uh. So I've got that coming up. Um, I started a new series on my channel. I only did one episode so far, but I had a lot of fun with it. And it was really nice to just kind of go back to the basics and talk movies. Um, I started a thing called like um, recommend 10 movies to each other. So what did I just watch kind of thing? And uh, Tim recommended 10 movies to me. I watched them and we just discussed them. I ranked them, nice. rated them, and then we watched them. And then now we switch it up and I gave him 10 to watch. So it was a lot of fun. And even if, like, I'm the kind of person, even if I don't like a movie someone recommends, I don't get upset. Like, right. I, it, if I don't want to watch something, I won't watch something. I'm not good. Mad with somebody, yeah. But and Sidner is hilarious. He busts my balls so much. I wouldn't have it any other way. Like, and Stan and so many others, Chris, like, I always try to point people out in the chat. I appreciate you guys hanging out. It's a lot of fun, like I said. Um, much well, everybody, let's go uh, You know, ransack Bob's channel on October 25th. Come hang out as uh, he puts the proverbial crown on my head for who knows what reason. I guess we'll find out that night. Yeah. Bob, you're amazing. I got some crazy things planned, I think. So we'll see. I get to uh, you guys are always amazing. Like I said, join the Discord. Uh, Patreon link is in the description below. We'll talk soon. See you all next Thursday. Have a good one. Thank you, Bob. Have a good night. See y'all. Thank you for watching The Disconnected. On the way out, make sure that you are subscribed to the channel, that you've liked the video, and that you've copied the link to be able to share it with someone else that may appreciate this.